Amber couldn't shake off the unsettling feeling that something bad was on the horizon. Her heart raced, and anxiety clung to her like a shadow she couldn't escape. She felt trapped in the grip of nervousness, unsure of how to free herself from its hold. Emma, do you think we will make it through this? She voiced her fears. Come on, stop thinking negatively. Focus on winning today and using the prize money for a trip, Emma playfully chided, attempting to lighten the mood. And don't forget, I'm right here with you. Just don't drive too fast or you might just see me on the road, she added with a wink. Got it, Amber replied, taking a deep breath in an effort to calm her racing nerves. She attempted to find solace in deep breaths, but tranquility remained elusive to her. Her full concentration was devoted to the steering wheel and the accelerator pedal. The race route led away from the city, threading through the challenging terrains on the outskirts of Michigan. On these winding mountain roads, even a slight miscalculation could result in a catastrophic accident. With great rewards came great risks. Amber's confidence wavered momentarily, but she shook off the self-doubt. The race was about to begin. Engines roared to life as the crowd's cheers filled the air. Amber surged ahead from the starting line, determined to seize the lead. Suddenly, Emma's voice snapped her back. Amber, look, that car just passed us. Reacting swiftly, Amber pressed the accelerator, determined to reclaim her position. The swift challenge caught her off guard, and she wasn't prepared for it. She accelerated, pushing herself to overtake the competitor. But this rival wasn't going down without a fight. Amber recognized the expertise of her opponent. She closely trailed the car, but surpassing it proved to be a challenge. Attempting to pass on the left, she was blocked. Switching to the right, her opponent mirrored her moves, effectively blocking her attempts to overtake. This situation was foreign to Amber, as she was accustomed to being in the lead. Suddenly, the window of the front car rolled down. Amid the darkness of the night, Amber and Emma saw the person in the passenger seat gesture with a thumb pointing downward. The action, though familiar, only fueled Amber's frustration. Oddly, even though Ryan had intended to join them, his car was nowhere in sight despite the time that had passed. He should have been behind them, they assumed. Clenching her teeth, Amber pushed the throttle down, determined to surge ahead and overtake from the right. As she sped up, Emma rolled down her window, eager to witness her taking the lead. As they overtook the other car, Amber and Emma stole a glance at the driver. The car's window lowered, and amidst the speed, Amber caught a fleeting glimpse of the driver's face. Though it was just a momentary blur, it stirred something deep within her. Must be a mistaken resemblance, Amber told herself. Amber, it's Matt! Emma exclaimed in shock as they pulled ahead. While Amber's focus remained on the race, Emma had spotted his mischievous grin and wave. Matt, Amber echoed the name. Matt was a close friend of Darren's. Despite the resemblance she glimpsed, it couldn't possibly be Darren. Impossible. Amber felt as though fate had taken an unexpected twist tonight. As she grappled with these thoughts, Matt's car reappeared. Continuing without interruption, the car puzzled Amber. Both she and Emma must have been mistaken. The occupants weren't Darren and Matt, they had to be lookalikes. However, no matter how many people bore a resemblance to one another, the probability of such a precise coincidence seemed far-fetched. Two separate individuals resembling Darren and Matt, both coincidentally in the same car, it was implausible. Amber, watch out! Emma yelled, caught off guard by the sudden reappearance of the Darren lookalike. Amber's control wavered. Emma drew her attention to the car in front, which was abruptly slowing down. Attempting to respond, Amber hit the protective fence as she braked, minimizing the impact. Fortunately, both cars stopped, and although shaken, neither Amber nor Emma sustained injuries. Regaining her composure, Amber found herself facing Darren and Matt, who had reached their car by this time. Out. Darren's stern expression matched his commanding tone as he gestured for Amber to exit the vehicle. Facing him, Amber's anger and defiance gave way to submission. She lifted her head, meeting his gaze as she whispered, Hubby. She consciously softened her voice, hoping to quell his anger with gentleness. But her effort appeared to be in vain. Darren's demeanor was unusually severe, a side of him she had never seen before. 
I'm sorry, she uttered as she stepped out of the car, her tone subdued. Amber. Darren's voice was low and tense as he spoke her name, his teeth audibly clenched. He scrutinized her, his heart still racing from the collision. What did you promise me? His tone was icy, accusatory. Amber's head hung low, unable to meet his gaze. Let's go. Darren's command was brief and direct, offering no room for discussion. He refrained from saying more, his attention clearly on his damaged car. The prize money would have covered the cost of repairs, but now he faced the prospect of repaying someone for the vehicle. Amber's heart was a blend of fear and regret as she followed Darren to his car. Before getting in, Matt, who seemed unfazed by the tension, grinned at Amber. Hello, Amber. I'm Matt. Your driving skills are truly something, he commented. Amber caught the contrast between Matt's demeanor and Darren's solemn expression. To divert his attention, she returned the smile and moved ahead. Get lost! Darren's retort was chillingly cold, shutting down any possibility of a friendly exchange. Stepping back a pace, Matt realized he was far from breaking through Darren's current mood. As he mused on how Darren might handle the situation with Amber, he watched as Darren drove away, leaving him stranded in the wilderness. Panic set in. How was he going to get back? He regretted leaving the car. The sound of the engine starting behind him served as a stark reminder that Amber was also present. Hey, I need a ride back to Michigan, too. Matt turned around and knocked on Emma's window, gesturing for her to open the door. However, it seemed Emma either didn't notice him or chose to ignore him. She hit the accelerator, speeding away. The car receded into the distance, leaving Matt behind. He attempted to give chase, but his legs were no match for the vehicle's speed. He stood by the roadside, cursing under his breath. He vowed to remember her, his indignation burning fiercely. How could she leave him stranded like this? As the car disappeared from sight, Matt was left in the darkness, contemplating how he would call for assistance without his phone. Lost amidst unfamiliar terrain, he realized just how far he was from Michigan. His sense of direction left him utterly disoriented, Initially, he had come for entertainment, but now he was alone with the night sky as his only companion. Inside the car, Amber remained silent, hesitant to make a sound. She occasionally glanced at Darren, only to quickly avert her gaze upon encountering his stern expression. Words eluded her. She was adrift in uncertainty. The atmosphere within the car was thick with tension, suffocating Amber with its weight. She had grown accustomed to Darren's affectionate gestures. His sudden transformation into a stern figure caught her off guard. She feared his anger, dreading its implications. After around 50 minutes, they arrived at the Fleming Mansion. Both stepped out of the car. Following behind Darren, Amber struggled to find the right words, but his continued silence left her at a loss. Summoning her courage, she reached out and tugged at his clothing. Hubby, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Tears welled up in her eyes as she spoke, the sincerity of her regret evident in her voice. Seeing her in distress pained Darren in a way he hadn't anticipated. He reproached himself for being too harsh, but he couldn't risk letting her continue without learning a lesson. He gently removed her hand, his face unyielding. Without a word, he walked ahead, leaving her standing behind. As she watched him walk away, a mixture of emotions churned within her. She wanted to cry, but she held back her tears. Meanwhile, Thomas and Bella were giving Ryan an earful. They were furious at his disregard for their instructions and his late-night escapade over the wall. Although Thomas refrained from physical punishment due to his fragile condition, Bella was taking a violent approach. Ryan's fatigue was evident, and he noticed Bella dozing off intermittently. Whenever he attempted to shift his stance, Bella's eyes would snap open, catching him in the act. Learning that Darren and Amber had returned, Ryan's spirits lifted slightly. He watched as Thomas decided to sleep on the couch. Upon hearing of their arrival, he was immediately alert. Darren led the way, Amber trailing behind obediently. Beneath the soft glow of the crystal lamp, Bella's observant eyes caught sight of Amber's reddened eyes. 
Instantly, any traces of sleepiness vanished from her eyes. She rose from her seat and tenderly kissed Amber on the forehead. Amber, who has been troubling you? Bella inquired. Bella's gentle voice encouraged Amber to confide in her, to point out the source of her distress so that Bella could handle the situation swiftly. Ryan chimed in with a mischievous grin, directing his words at Bella. Grandma, it's our dear uncle. You should scold him right away, he playfully suggested. Bella gave Ryan a stern look. Stand properly, she reprimanded, before turning her attention to Darren. A glint of curiosity shone in her eyes as she wondered who had upset Amber so deeply. However, as her gaze met Darren's calm demeanor, even Bella hesitated. It had been quite a while since she had seen her son so disturbed. The sight of his evident agitation caught her off guard. Amber, come here. Tell me who has been causing you trouble. I shall be the judge of the matter, Bella urged once more. Bella's mind was dealing with a whirlwind of possibilities. Could it be that one of the household staff had bothered Amber to such an extent that it had ignited Darren's anger? But Bella knew her son well. If Amber had truly been wronged by someone within the mansion, Darren would have taken swift action rather than appearing consumed by such intense anger. Bella found herself puzzled, unable to decipher the situation. 